Out of all the regions of the modern United States, perhaps none stand out so stark as the inhabitants of the rugged mountain country that previously served as the westernmost boundary of the British Empire. Often being portrayed as unflattering caricatures, which is where the hillbilly stereotype originates from, this area has one of the oldest histories of any English-speaking region of the Americas. The region of Appalachia, or Appalachia, is a geocultural division of the United States centered on the Appalachian Mountains stretching from New York to Alabama. However, the greater Appalachian region extends far beyond this, containing around 26 million people, or around 8% of the country. Rather mind-blowing considering the jokes and malalignments aimed at a group of people who at one point in time were undeniably one of the cultural backbones of Northern America and maybe to a certain extent in the present day as well. Despite being an amalgamation of countless different cultures and peoples, Appalachia has evolved and emerged into quite the distinct identity, transcending many state boundaries, and those who identify prominently with the Appalachian region have impacted far beyond this boundary. But what is the origin of the people known today as the Appalachians? The indigenous inhabitants of the Appalachian region were divided between a multitude of different Amerindian tribes. However, by far the largest and most well-known are the Shawnee, Chickasaw, and Cherokee, who have no known ethnic or linguistic affiliation between each other, literally all belonging to different language families related to others in the U.S. and Canada. The Cherokee, the most prominent of these tribes, had actually originated from the Great Lakes region related to the Iroquois civilization that existed there before migrating south to the Great Smoky Mountains. Although interestingly, the name of Appalachia is actually derived from a Native American village far to the south encountered by Spanish explorer Cabeza de Vaca and subsequent incursions north by later conquistadors branded this entire mountainous region as Appalachia. When the British would later create the 13 colonies stretching from Georgia to Maine, the Appalachian Mountains would act as the de facto border of settlements being solely inhabited by Native Americans and the scant lone European trader for nearly a hundred years before the first Europeans started to arrive en masse in this region when the colonies had reached their carrying capacity for the time. Because the region was viewed as less fertile and more treacherous than the eastern coast, which it was, the majority of settlers were poor whites from ethnic minority groups, oftentimes at the encouragement of the colonial government who wished for a more secure buffer region between their already established settlements and the often hostile natives, French or Spanish. I discussed this to a certain extent in my video over Celtic Americans, but the vast majority of early settlers in the 1700s were of Celtic stock, most famously and prominently the Scots-Irish or Ulster Scots, a unique group with a rather curious history. Contrary to popular belief, the Scots-Irish are not merely an amalgam of people of half-Scottish and half-Irish ancestry, as instead they have a complex heritage tied to English expansionism in the British Isles. Scots had been settling in the northern Irish region known as Ulster since the 1600s, but migration took off in the following decades mostly from the English-Scottish border region, heavily encouraged by the British due to the rabble-rousing of the Scots in this region. However, this caused quite a bit of contention between these new settlers of mostly Protestant background and the Catholic Irish who had been at odds with the English for centuries. The resultant population intermarried with the Irish to an extent and gradually took on many of the native customs and cultures of the Irish, resulting in the label of Scots-Irish or Scotch-Irish, and over the years this group identified and blended in more heavily with the Irish and the surrounding Celtic population. Because of their status as a poor ethnic and religious minority in such a volatile region, and the following famine that struck nearly all of Ireland, an incomprehensibly massive wave of migration from the Ulster region headed for the Americas and other British colonies. Although as many arrived rather late, most were able to only settle in the dangerous and unsettled border region that became Appalachia. The weather, climate, terrain, and location of this region were all extremely hazardous given that the inland mountainous regions were not conducive for farming and agriculture, one of the reasons that there were never a large number of slaves in Appalachian country, even those located in slave states like Virginia, Maryland, or Kentucky, and the proximity to the frontier region saw frequent raids from Native American tribes who mostly retreated further and further west, although intermarriage and integration with the settlers was not unheard of. 
Over time, these Scots-Irish immigrants to Appalachia began to form their own unique regional identity and culture, although this wasn't universally acknowledged for another hundred years or so, and they were later joined by other migrants of European descent, mostly Anglo-Americans from the eastern coast or the Germans, strangely enough, where they were especially prominent in western Pennsylvania. In Appalachia, there were also unique multiracial communities formed as well through intermarriage between white settlers and natives, whites and escaped or freed blacks fleeing to the countryside to avoid reprisals, and some communities such as the Melungeons or Redbones who were basically just an amalgam of all the surrounding people groups. Through generations of settlement and intermixing, thus created a unique regional culture with Appalachians not identifying with their home nations due to many having lived there for centuries, considering themselves to be the descendants of some of the first British settlers in North America, and this can be seen in the present day. On the United States Census, there are many options for ethnic identification based off national borders, and curiously, only a small percentage of those in Appalachia actually identify as Scottish or Scotch-Irish, with the plurality actually identify as ethnically American, which may sound quite confusing. Is American even an ethnicity? Sorta, maybe, kinda. That might be a topic for another time. But the vast majority of those who identify as American in the Appalachian region are of European descent of mixed Scots-Irish and English heritage. Appalachian has essentially become a pseudo-ethnicity, meaning even though they haven't formed in the conventional method of ethnogenesis that results in a homogenized gene pool and genetic clustering that can be seen in older ethnic groups, and they have more limited exclusive linguistic and cultural ties, they effectively act as a distinct ethnic group seen in both mainstream media and common vernacular, and if given enough time, they would have probably developed the traits mentioned before, although in the present day this seems unlikely as the U.S. and the world becomes more interconnected. This is similar to how some Muslim, African, Asian, or Latino immigrants to the United States act as a pseudo-ethnic collective in the way that they share a common kinship to their respective groups, despite not sharing the common lineage or culture seen in conventional ethnic groups. Genetically speaking, the Appalachians as a whole would probably have a median genetic clustering somewhere in the northern British Isles along the border country of England, Scotland, and Ireland, therefore being distinct from any of these populations, along with having additional admixture from Germans, Amerindians, Africans, and other groups. Although I don't know much of Appalachian culture outside that scene in the movies, my father's parents originate in the Pennsylvania and Appalachian region of German and Scots-Irish ancestry, and on the other side of my lineage, on my mom's side, my five times great-grandfather was a former slave from northern Alabama who moved to Texas after the Civil War. But in fact, going back far enough, an unbelievably high percentage of the American population has some degree of ancestry from this region, either from the recent or distant past. Many of the earlier settlers of Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and especially Texas have roots in Appalachian country, and many more millions had ancestors who passed through this region. But not only do Americans to the West have Appalachian roots, as during the period of industrialization and modernization, many poor whites and blacks from this region moved to East Coast cities such as Baltimore, Philadelphia, or even New York, and this was exemplified during the Great Depression, where they were used as cheap manual laborers in factories, mills, or as dock workers in port cities. In the current day, those of European descent are still well overrepresented in the greater Appalachia region when compared to the rest of the country, sitting at around 85%. So if it were a state, it would have the 10th highest white percentage in the country and 5th highest for non-Hispanic whites, as there are very few Latino migrants in this region, nearly all located in large cities, along with an even smaller number of people of Asian descent, only around 1%. Black Americans are the largest racial minority by far at nearly 10%, but it depends on the region, as further inland near the mountainous core, the population is far more homogenous, but in the southern regions of Appalachia and Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, the black population is clearly much higher, located just north of the Black Belt of the United States, the region with the highest proportion of black people in the country. Only a small minority, around 0.3% according to official census statistics, are descended from the original Native Americans of Appalachia, most notably the Cherokee. And although the Cherokee may have been nearly wiped out from their homeland, they are still the largest Amerindian ethnicity in the eastern United States by far. 
The only region where natives still make up any significant proportion of the population of Appalachia is in North Carolina, where they make up 6, 8, or even 27 percent of some counties in the West. And the percentage of whites in this region with Native American heritage is less than one would think. Fewer than 20 percent and very likely in the single digits. There are also much smaller minorities of Jews and Middle Easterners and a small mixed-race population, although intermarriage is much lower here than in other parts of the country for a variety of reasons. Interestingly, despite their reputation, the vast majority of Appalachians did not own or support slavery, and most had indifferent or outright hostile views towards the institution due to a variety of factors including mindset, socioeconomic status, climate, and geography. This was, of course, the reason that the rural, isolated West Virginia broke off from Virginia to form its own state during the Civil War, and many other areas of Appalachia, from Alabama to the Carolinas, were sympathetic to the Union. This is perhaps best known in the Free State of Jones, a briefly declared independent county in central Mississippi, not really located in Appalachia, and this mostly had to do with burdensome taxes imposed by the Confederate Army rather than any moralistic reasons, although several other regions in Appalachia opposed the Confederacy as well. So, in conclusion, the Appalachians have quite a unique and rich history as the old outcasts of one land to arguably become the modern outcasts of another, although hopefully this video has shed some light on the original peoples and newer settlers of America's most maligned region. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the Appalachian people and region, and for today's poll, let me know which region of Appalachia you think is the most interesting. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone.